guys, it's Ty here with Ty the Dog Guy on the Daily, and I want to talk about the difference between training and everyday life. Now, this is, uh, I find myself talking about this a lot because a lot of our clients struggle a little bit to find that balance. Um, and, you know, what they'll tell me is they say, you know, hey, when I go outside and, you know, we go out to a field or a park or the driveway and we're practicing this, my dog does amazing. But when, you know, when it's around the house or whatever, he's, you know, he's not as good or he has a problem here or there or whatever. And so the problem with something like this is, is that too often we're, we're tipping the dog off. We're tipping our hand and saying um, things are different, you know, because we're acting different. Or we're expecting things different from the dog. So, for example, when people are out training, you know, they've got, uh, you know, they walk a certain way and, and they, they're paying 100% attention to the dog and they've got their training gear and they've got their treats or food or whatever and they've got everything ready and they're following through on their commands. And then when they're in the house hanging out watching TV, they're not following through on their commands. And so the dog just realizes I've got two sets of rules. One set is for... Um, you know when we're out training and the other set is for when we're not out training and so so anyways uh, Essentially what happens in these scenarios is we teach the dog to not pay attention to us and we teach the dog You know when to pay attention to us. I guess I could I should say and so that's you know that ends up being a big uh, You know big uh, a big problem and so the way around this problem is uh, Is a couple things number one is to always make sure that no matter where you're giving a command how you're giving a command that you're in a position to back it up. Now, I, I say this, this is mostly during a training period of a few months or whatever, but once you're, you know, you get to a point to where the dog just listens, you know, um, if you're doing things well, and that's it, even if you don't have to back it up. But especially during the beginning of any training program or any program that you're in, you want to make sure that any command you give, you're in a position to make sure that it happens. Because if you, and that's, you know, um, so if that's while you're watching TV or if that's while you're doing a training session out in the yard, both ways, you've got to be in a position to make sure that it happens. Um, if you're not, like I said, you're just tipping your hand and showing the dog, eh, I want you to do something, but I'm not that serious about it and I'm not going to follow through. So uh, make sure you do that. The other thing that we always recommend to our clients is something that we call integration training. And so integration training is you want to set up these scenarios where you're otherwise occupied, but you're putting yourself in a position where you can teach the dog at the same time. So for example, um, uh, maybe you're watching TV or eating dinner. That's a good time to work on a downstay or a place command. Or maybe you're gonna give your dog his meal. That's a good time to work on a sit command. Or maybe you're gonna walk through a door. That's a good time to work on a wait command. So, so anyways, you're already in the midst of doing something. You're going through a door, you're eating dinner, you're feeding the meal, whatever just do two things at once integrate the training with that moment so that the dog realizes that hey even though even though she's cooking dinner or even though he's making the bed or even though they're walking throughout the house you know commands are still going to come and they're still going to be reinforced and so if you can always be in a position to back things up and then do integration training so the dog realizes a lot of dogs realize they don't get commands unless they're out you know on the training field or whatever and so if you can integrate that more into your daily life, dogs are going to start to understand way better that, um, hey, I just need to be obedient at all times. And so the, the key here is to not differentiate such a wide, um, not create such a wide differentiation between we're training versus we're living. Those things shouldn't be too far removed from each other. Training's always going to have a different feel for it, you know, when you're out there doing training sessions. Um, it, it will always be different, but your living, the way that you live with your dog shouldn't be that much different because that's where you're going to run into this problem. So hopefully that helps.